Nifirir Karkakai, Wikipedia article audio. Nifirir Karkakai was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, the third king of the fifth dynasty. Nifirir Kar was the eldest son of Sahur with his consort Merit Nedi known as Rainfare before he came to the throne. He acceded the day after his father's death and reigned for 8 to 11 years, sometime in the early to mid 25th century BCE. He was himself very likely succeeded by his eldest son, born of his queen Kant cause II, the prince Rainfer B who would take the throne as King Nifirfra. Nifirirkar fathered another pharaoh, Niuzer e Ni who took the throne after Nifirfra's short reign and the brief rule of the poorly known Shepsis Kair. Sources Contemporaneous sources Historical sources Family Parents and siblings Consort and children Reign Duration Activities in Egypt Administration Modification of the royal titulary Trade and military activities Personality Building activities Pyramid Complex Pyramid Mortuary Temple Sun Temple Sun Temple of Yuzerkov Funerary Cult Notes, References and Sources Notes Sources 2 Nefirirkar was acknowledged by his contemporaries as a kind and benevolent ruler, intervening in favor of his courtiers after a mishap. His rule witnessed a growth in the number of administration and priesthood officials, who used their expanded wealth to build architecturally more sophisticated mastabas, where they recorded their biographies for the first time. Nefirirkar was the last pharaoh to significantly modify the standard royal titulary, separating the nomen or birth name, from the prenomen or throne name. From his reign onwards, the former was written in a cartouche preceded by the son of R.A. epithet. His rule witnessed continuing trade relations with Nubia to the south and possibly with Byblos on the Levantine coast to the north. Nefirirkar started a pyramid for himself in the royal necropolis of Abuzur, called B.A. Nefirirkar meaning Nefirirkar is a B.A. It was initially planned to be a step pyramid, a form which had not been employed since the days of the Third Dynasty circa 120 years earlier. This plan was modified to transform the monument into a true pyramid, the largest in Abuzur which was never completed owing to the death of the king. In addition, Nefirirkar built a temple to the sun god R.A. called Setibra, that is site of the heart of R.A. Ancient sources tell that it was the largest one built during the 5th dynasty but as of the early 21st century it has not yet been located. After his death, Nefirirkar benefited from a funerary cult taking place in his mortuary temple, which had been completed by his son Niuzer e Ni. This cult seems to have disappeared at the end of the Old Kingdom period, although it might have been revived during the 12th dynasty of the Middle Kingdom, albeit in a very limited form. In all probability, it was also around this time that the story of the Papyrus Westcar was first written, a tale where Yuzerkov, Sehur, and Nefirirkar are said to be brothers, the sons of R.A. with a woman Redajet. Nefirirkar is well attested in sources contemporaneous with his reign. Beyond his pyramid complex, he is mentioned in the tomb of many of his contemporaries such as his vizier Washpta the courtier Ra'ur and the priest Akhethetep. Nefirirkar also appears in the nearly contemporaneous Giza writing board, a short list grouping six kings from different dynasties dating to the later 5th or early 6th dynasty.
The writing board was uncovered in the tomb of a high official named Maid Jeru, who may have composed it for his use in the afterlife. Neferirkar is attested in two ancient Egyptian king lists, both dating to the New Kingdom. The earliest of these is the Abidus king list written during the reign of Seti I. There, Neferirkar's Nomen Kakai occupies the 28th entry, in between those of Sehur and Neferfra. During the subsequent reign of Ramses II, Neferirkar's Prenomen was recorded on the 27th entry of the Saqqara tablet, but this time as a successor of Sehur and predecessor of Shepsis Kair. Neferirkar was also given an entry on the Turin Canon, a document dating to the reign of Ramses II as well. Neferirkar's entry is commonly believed to be on the third column 19th row, unfortunately this line has been lost in a large lacuna affecting the papyrus and neither his reign length nor his successor can be ascertained from the surviving fragments. The Egyptologist Miroslav Werner has furthermore proposed that the Turin canon makes a new dynasty start with this entry and thus that Neferirkar would be its founder. The division of the Turin canon list of kings into dynasties is a currently debated. The Egyptologist Yarmur Malek for example sees the divisions between groups of kings occurring in the canon as marking transfers of royal residence rather than the rise and fall of royal dynasties as this term is currently understood, a usage which only began in the Egyptian context with the 3rd century BCE work of the priest Manetho. Similarly, the Egyptologist Stefan Siedelmeyer, considers the break in the Turin canon at the end of the 8th dynasty to represent the relocation of the royal residence from Memphis to Heracleopolis. The Egyptologist John Baines holds views that are closer to Werner's, believing that the canon was divided into dynasties with totals for the time elapsed given at the end of each, though only few such divisions have survived. Similarly, Professor John Van Seters views the breaks in the canon as divisions between dynasties, but in contrast, states that the criterion for these divisions remains unknown. He speculates that the pattern of dynasties may have been taken from the nine divine kings of the greater and lesser Enneads. The Egyptologist Ian Shaw believes that the Turin canon gives some credibility to Manetho's division of dynasties but considers the king lists to be a form of ancestor worship and not a historical record. This whole problematic could be mooted in another of Werner's speculations, where he proposed that Neferirkar's entry may have been located on the 20th line rather than the 19th as is usually believed. This would credit Neferirkar with seven years of reign and would make Sahur the dynasty founder in the hypothesis that the canon records such events. Archaeological evidences have established that the transitions from Muzerkov to Sahur and from Sahur to Neferirkar were father-son transitions, so that neither Sahur nor Neferirkar can be dynasty founders in the modern sense of the term. Neferirkar was mentioned in the Egyp Sheikha a history of Egypt written in the 3rd century BCE during the reign of Ptolemy II by Manetho. No copies of the Egypt Sheikha have survived to this day and it is now known only through later writings by Sextus Julius Africanus and Eusebius. The Byzantine scholar George Sincellus reports that Africanus relates that the Egypt Sheikha mentioned the succession Sephras Nefertari's sesires for the early 5th dynasty. Sephirs, Nefertaris, and Sesires are believed to be the Hellenized forms for Sehur, Neferirkar and Shepsis Kair, respectively. Thus, Manetho's reconstruction of the 5th dynasty is info agreement with the Saqqara tablet. In Africanus' epitome of the Egyp Sheikha, Nefertaris is reported to have reigned for 20 years. Until 2005, the identity of Neferirkar's parents was uncertain. Some Egyptologists, including Nicholas Grimmel, 
William C. Hayes, Hartwig Alton Muller, A.E. Don Dodson, and Diane Hilton, viewed him as a son of Userkoff and Kant I, and a brother to his predecessor Sehuer. The main impetus behind this theory was the Papyrus Westcar, an ancient Egyptian story narrating the rise of the Fifth Dynasty. In it, a magician prophesies Khufu the future demise of his lineage as three brothers, the first three kings of the Fifth Dynasty, will be born of the god Ra and a woman named Redajet. Egyptologists such as Werner have sought to discern a historical truth in this account proposing that Sahur and Neferirkar were siblings born of Queen Kant Kaz I. In 2005, excavations of the causeway leading up to Sahur's pyramid yielded new relief fragments which showed indisputably that Pharaoh Sahur and his consort, Queen Meritneti, were Neferirkar's parents. Indeed, these reliefs discovered by Werner and Tarek el Awadi depict Sahur and Merit Neti together with their two sons Rainfer and Netyeri Renra. While both sons are given the title of king's eldest son, possibly indicating that they were twins, Rainfer is shown closer to Sahur and also given the title of chief lector priest, which may reflect that he was born first and thus given higher positions. Since Rainfer is known to have been the name of Neferirkar before he took the throne, as indicated by reliefs from the mortuary temple of Sahur, no doubt subsists as to Neferirkar's filiation. Nothing more is known on Netyeri Renra, an observation which led Werner and Elawadi to speculate that he could have attempted to seize the throne at the unexpected death of Neferirkar's son and successor Neferfra who died in his early twenties after two years on the throne. In this conjectural hypothesis, he would be the ephemeral Shepsis care. Finally, the same relief as well as another one record a further four sons of Sahur, Kakare, Horemsuf, Riemsuf, and Nebankar but the identity of their mother is unknown, so that they are therefore at least half-brothers to Neferirkar. As of the early 21st century, the only known queen of Neferirkar is Kant Kaz II. This is due to the position of her pyramid next to that of Neferirkar as was normal for the consort of a king, as well as her title of king's wife and several reliefs representing both of them together. Neferirkar could possibly have had at least one other spouse, as suggested by the presence of a small pyramid next to that of Kant Kaz but this remains conjectural. Neferirkar and his consort Kant Kaz II were, in all likelihood, the parents of Prince Rainfer B, the future pharaoh Neferfra. This relationship is confirmed by a relief on a limestone slab discovered in a house in the village near a buzer depicting Neferirkar and his wife Kant Kaz with the king's eldest son Rainfer, a name identical with some variants of Neferfra's own. This indicates that, just as for Neferirkar, Rainfer was Neferfra's name when he was still only a crown prince, that is, before his accession to the throne. Neferirkar and Kant Kaz II had at least one other child together, the future pharaoh user Eni. Indeed, Neferirkar's consort Kant Kaz II is known to have been the user's mother since excavations of her mortuary temple yielded a fragmentary relief showing her facing the user and his family. Remarkably, on this relief both Kant Kaz and the user appear on the same scale, an observation which may be connected with Kant Kaz enhanced status during the user's reign, as he sought to legitimize his rule following the premature death of Neferfra and the possible challenge by Shepsis care. Further evidence for the filiation of Ni user are the location of his pyramid next to that of Neferirkar, as well as his reuse for his own valley temple of materials from Neferirkar's unfinished constructions. Yet another son of Neferirkar and Kant Kaz has been proposed, probably younger than both Neferfra and Ni user, Iryanra, 
a Prince Iry Pat whose relationship is suggested by the fact that his funerary cult was associated with that of his mother, both having taken place in the temple of Kant Cause II. Finally, Neferirkar and Kant Cause II may also be the parents of Queen Kant Cause III, whose tomb was discovered in Abuser in 2015. Indeed, based on the location and general date for her tomb, as well as her titles of king's wife and king's mother, Kant Khas III was almost certainly Neferfra's consort and the mother of either Menka Yuhi or Kaiu or Shepsis Kair. Manathos Egyp Sheka assigns Neferir Kair a reign of 20 years, but the archaeological evidence now suggests that this is an overestimate. First, the damaged Palermo stone preserves the year of the fifth cattle count for Neferir Kair's time on the throne. The cattle count was an important event aimed at evaluating the amount of taxes to be levied on the population. By the reign of Neferir Kair, this involved counting cattle, oxen, and small livestock. This event is believed to have been biennial during the Old Kingdom period that is occurring once every two years, meaning that Neferirkar reigned at least ten years. Given the shape of the Palermo stone, this record must correspond to his final year or be close to it, so that he ruled no more than eleven years. This is further substantiated by two cursive inscriptions left by masons on stone blocks from the pyramids of Kant Khas II and Neferirkar both of which also date to Neferir Kair's fifth cattle count, its highest known regnal year. Finally, Werner has pointed out that a 20-year-long reign would be difficult to reconcile with the unfinished state of his pyramid in Abuser. Beyond his construction of a pyramid and sun temple, little is known of Neferir Kair's activities during his time on the throne. Some events dating to his first and final years of reign are recorded on the surviving fragments of the Palermo Stone, a royal annal covering the period from the start of the reign of Menes of the First Dynasty until around the time of Neferir Kair's rule. According to the Palermo Stone, the future pharaoh Neferir Kair, then called Prince Rainfer, ascended the throne the day after his father Sahur's death which occurred on the 28th day of the ninth month. The annal then records that in his first year as king, Neferirkar granted land to the agricultural estates serving the cults of the Ennead, the souls of Pe and Nekan and the gods of Karaha to Ra and Hathor, he dedicated an offering table provided with 210 daily offerings, and ordered the construction of two storerooms and the employment of new dependents in the host temple. Neferirkar also commanded the fashioning and opening of the mouth of an Electrum statue of Ihi, escorting to the MRT chapel of Snefru of the NHT shrine of Hathor. Later in his reign, in the year of the fifth cattle count, Neferirkar had a bronze statue of himself erected and set up four barks for Ra and Horus in and around his sun temple, two of which were of copper. The souls of Pe and Nekan and Wajet received Electrum endowments, while Ta was given lands. The fact that the Palermo stone terminates around Neferirkar's rule led some scholars, such as Grimmel, to propose that they might have been compiled during his reign. Few specific administrative actions taken by Neferir Kare are known. One decree of his inscribed on a limestone slab was excavated in 1903 in Abydos and is now in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. The decree exempts personnel belonging to a temple of Kentia Mentia from undertaking compulsory labor in perpetuity under penalty of forfeiture of all property and freedom and be forced to work the fields or in a stone quarry. This decree indirectly suggests that taxation and compulsory labor was imposed on everybody as a general rule. More generally, Neferir Kair's reign saw the growth of the Egyptian administration and priesthood, which amassed more power than in earlier reigns, although the king remained a living god. 
in particular the positions of viziers and overseer of the expedition, that is the highest offices, were opened to people from outside the royal family. In conjunction with this trend, the mastabas of high officials started to become more elaborate, with, for example, chapels including multiple rooms, and from the mid to late 5th dynasty, wide entrance porticos with columns and family tomb complexes. It is also at this time that these officials started to record autobiographies ONI the walls of their tombs. The reign of Neferir Karkakai saw the last important modification to the titulary of pharaohs. He was the earliest pharaoh to separate the NSWTBJTJ and S3R epithets of the royal titulary. He associated these two epithets with two different, independent names, the prenomen and nomen, respectively. The prenomen or throne name, taken by the new king as he ascended the throne, was written in a cartouche immediately after the B and Sedge signs for NSWTBJTJ. From Neferir Kair's time onwards, the nomen, or birth name, was also written in cartouche systematically preceded by the mention of Son of R.A., an epithet which had seen little use in preceding times. There is little evidence for military action during Neferir Kair's reign. William C. Hayes proposed that a few fragmentary limestone statues of kneeling and bound prisoners of war discovered in his mortuary temple possibly attest to punitive raids in Libya to the west or the Sinai and Canaan to the east during his reign. The art historian William Stevenson Smith commented that such statues were customary elements of the decoration of royal temples and mastabas suggesting that they may not be immediately related to actual military campaigns. Similar statues and small wooden figures of kneeling captives were discovered in the mortuary complexes of Neferfra, Jedgar IC, Unas, Teddy, Pepe I and Pepe II as well as in the tomb of Vizier Seneji Mibmii. Trade relations with Nubia are the only ones attested to during Neferir Kair's reign. The archaeological evidence for this are seal impressions and ostracan bearing his name uncovered in the fortress of Buin, on the second cataract of the Nile. Contacts with Byblos on the Levantine coast might also have happened during Neferir Kair's rule, as suggested by a single alabaster bowl inscribed with his name unearthed there. Neferir Kair's reign was unusual for the significant number of surviving contemporary records which describe him as a kind and gentle ruler. When Rawer, an elderly nobleman and royal courtier, was accidentally touched by the king's mace during a religious ceremony a dangerous situation which could have caused this official to be put immediately to death or banished from court since the pharaoh was viewed as a living god in Old Kingdom mythology Neferir Kar quickly pardoned Ra'er and commanded that no harm should occur to the latter for the incident. As Ra'er gratefully states in an inscription from his Giza tomb. Similarly, Neferir Kar gave the priest of Tatashepsis the unprecedented honor of kissing his feet rather than the ground in front of him. Finally, when the vizier Washpta suffered a stroke while attending court, the king quickly summoned the palace's chief doctors to treat his dying vizier. When Washpta died, Neferir Kar was reportedly inconsolable and retired to his personal quarters to mourn the loss of his friend. The king then ordered the purification of Wushpta's body in his presence and ordered an ebony coffin made for the deceased vizier. Wushpta was buried with special endowments and rituals courtesy of Neferir Kar. The records of the king's actions are inscribed in Wushpta's tomb itself and emphasize Neferir Kar's humanity towards his subjects. The Pyramid of Neferir Kar Kakai known to the ancient Egyptians as B.A. Neferirkar and variously translated as Neferirkar is a B.A. or Neferirkar takes form, is located in the royal necropolis of Abuzur. It is the largest one built during the 5th dynasty, 
equaling roughly the size of the Pyramid of Mengor. The pyramid construction comprised three stages, first built were six steps of rubble, their retaining walls made of locally quarried limestone indicating that the monument was originally planned to be a step pyramid, an unusual design for the time which had not been used since the Third Dynasty, some 120 years earlier. At this point the pyramid, had it been completed, would have reached 52 m. This plan was then altered by a second construction stage with the addition of filling between the steps meant to transform the monument into a true pyramid. At a later stage, the workers enlarged the pyramid further, adding a girdle of masonry and smooth casing stones of red granite. This work was never finished, even after the works implemented by any user. With a square base of 108 m long sides, the pyramid would have reached 72 m high had it been completed. Today it is in ruins owing to extensive stone robbing. The entrance to the pyramid's substructures was located on its north side. There, a descending corridor with a gable roof made of limestone beams led into a burial chamber. No pieces of the sarcophagus of the king were found there. The pyramid of Neferirkar is surrounded by smaller pyramids and tombs which seem to form an architectural unit, the cemetery of his close family. This ensemble was meant to be reached from the Nile via a causeway and a valley temple near the river. At the death of Neferirkar, only the foundations of both had been laid and the user later diverted the unfinished causeway to his own pyramid. The mortuary temple was far from finished at the death of Neferirkar but it was completed later, by his sons Neferfra and the user Eni using cheap mud bricks and wood rather than stone. A significant cache of administrative papyri, known as the abuser papyri, was uncovered there by illegal diggers in 1893 and subsequently by Borchardt in 1903. Further papyri were also uncovered in the mid-70s during a University of Prague Egyptological Institute excavation. The presence of this cache is due to the peculiar historical circumstances of the mid-5th dynasty. As both Neferirkar and his heir Neferfra died before their pyramid complexes could be finished, the user altered their planned layout, diverting the causeway leading to Neferirkar's pyramid to his own. This meant that Neferfra's and Neferirkar's mortuary complexes became somewhat isolated on the Abuser Plateau, their priests therefore had to live next to the temple premises in makeshift dwellings and they stored the administrative records on site. In contrast, the records of other temples were kept in the pyramid town close to Sahur's or Neuser's pyramid, where the current level of ground water means any papyrus has long since disappeared. The Abuser papyri records some details pertaining to Neferirkar's mortuary temple. Its central chapel housed a niche with five statues of the king. The central one is described in the papyri as being a representation of the king as Osiris, while the first and last ones depicted him as the king of Upper and Lower Egypt respectively. The temple also comprised storerooms for the offerings, where numerous stone vessels now broken had been deposited. Finally the papyri indicate that of the four boats included in the mortuary complex, Two were buried to the north and south of the pyramid, one of which was unearthed by Werner. During the late period of ancient Egypt the mortuary temple of Neferirkar was used as a secondary cemetery. A gravestone made of yellow calcite was discovered by Borchardt bearing an Aramaic inscription reading belonging to Neznu, son of Topaknam. Another inscription in Aramaic found on a limestone block and dating to the 5th century BCE reads Manukanon son of Sua. Neferirkar is known from ancient sources to have built a temple to the sun god Ra, which is yet to be identified archaeologically. 
It was called Setibra, meaning site of the heart of R.A., and was, according to contemporary sources, the largest one built during the 5th dynasty. It is possible that the temple was only built out of mud bricks, with a planned completion in stone which had not started when Neferirkar died. In this case, it would rapidly have turned into ruins that would be very difficult to locate for archaeologists. Alternatively, the Egyptologist Rainer Stadelman has proposed that the Setibra as well as the Sun Temples of Sehur and Yuzerkov were one and the same known building, that attributed to Yuzerkov and Abuzer. Of all the Sun Temples built during the 5th dynasty, the Setibra is the one most commonly cited in ancient sources. Due to this, some details of its layout are known. It had a large central obelisk, an altar, and storerooms, a sealed bark room housing two boats and a hall of the said festival. Religious festivals did certainly take place in sun temples, as is attested to by the abuser papyri. In the case of the Setibra, the festival of the night of R.A. is specifically said to have taken place there. This was a festival concerned with Ra's journey during the night and connected with the ideas of renewal and rebirth that were central to sun temples. The temple played an important role in the distribution of food offerings which were brought every day from there to the mortuary temple of the king. This journey was made by boat, indicating that the Setibra was not adjacent to Neferirkar's pyramid. This also underscores the dependent position of the king with respect to R.A., as offerings were made to the sun god and then to the deceased king. The Egyptologist Werner Kaiser proposed, based on a study of the evolution of the hieroglyph determinative for sun temple, that Neferirkar completed the sun temple of Yuzerkov known in ancient Egyptian as Nekanra sometime around the fifth cattle count of his reign. This opinion is shared by the Egyptologists and archaeologists Ogden Golet, Mark Lehner, and Herbert Rick. In this hypothesis, Neferirkar would have provided the Nekanra with its monumental obelisk of limestone and red granite. Werner and the Egyptologist Paul Posener Krieger have pointed out two difficulties with the hypothesis. Firstly, it would imply a long interlude between the two phases of construction of Yuzerkov's temple, nearly 25 years between the erection of the temple and that of its obelisk. Secondly, they observe that both the pyramid and sun temple of Neferirkar were unfinished at his death, raising the question as to why the king would have devoted exceptional effort on a monument of Yuzerkov when his own still required substantial works to be completed. Instead, Werner proposes that it was Sahur who finished the Nekanra. As with the other pharaohs of the 5th dynasty, Neferirkar was the object of a funerary cult after his death. Cylinder seals belonging to priests and priestesses serving in this cult attest his existence during the Old Kingdom period. For example, a black steatite seal, now in the Metropolitan Museum bears the inscription Votary of Hathor and Priestess of the Good God Neferirkar, Beloved of the Gods. Some of these officials had roles in the cults of several kings, as well as in the their sun temples. Offerings for the funerary cult of deceased rulers were provided by dedicated agricultural estates set up during the king's reign. A few of these are known for Neferirkar, including the estate of Kakai the I3GT of Kakai, strong is the power of Kakai, the plantations of Kakai. Nekbit desires that Kakai lives, Neferirkar is beloved of the Ennead and the mansion of the BA of Neferirkar. Traces of the continued existence of the funerary cult of Neferirkar beyond the Old Kingdom period are scant. A pair of statues belonging to a certain Sikhem Hotep were uncovered in Giza, one of which is inscribed with the standard ancient Egyptian offering formula followed by of the Temple of the King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Neferirkar, 
true of voice. The statues, which date to the early 12th dynasty of the Middle Kingdom period are the only archaeological evidences that Neferirkar's funerary cult still existed or had been revived around Abuzer at the time, albeit in a very limited form. <laughs>